Hi and welcome to this third video in the series on the Logical Editor. Uh, today we're going to be looking at controller data, program changes, etc. Uh, which is why you are confronted by Flourish on your screen. So for those of you who don't know, in every version of Windows since I think version 3.1, uh, Microsoft has included some MIDI files and this particular one has been present since Windows 98. Uh, you can tell a bit by the vibe of the music, but it's it's quite a good bit of MIDI programming. There's a fair bit of uh, intricacy and detail in there, and also it's included on every version of Windows since Windows 98. So if you look in C, Windows, and the media, you will find there's a few MIDI files in there. This is the one called Flourish, and this has just been played back on Halin Sonic SE. Um, if you've not got it on... Uh, Mac because why would you? I'm sure you can get hold of it if you want to do these uh, specific things but we're just going to look at uh, handling controllers and removing information etc. So one of the things you may find if you work with MIDI files uh, downloaded uh, from the internet is that they often have uh, program changes burnt into the beginning of the tracks etc and going through and deleting them 16 times can be a little bit tedious so we'll just take a quick look here so if we look at this particular one so finger bass here is quite a good example uh, if we go in the list editor um, I've actually got the filter turned on so if you weren't aware of how to do that if you set it up here with filters and then I'm just filtering out notes controllers and pitch bend because otherwise you get an enormous amount of information um, so the finger bass is quite a good one to look at because actually we've got three program changes. We've got one at the very beginning of the song which puts it to 34 which is uh, fingered bass sound and then at bar 33, no that's not bar 33, that's 33 seconds, um, it's changing it to program change 96 which is uh, a synth kind of pad sound and then about one minute before it changes it back. So this would really uh, mess things up if you were playing around. There we can see, so in fact if we put it on bars and beats it's around bar 18 just before bar 18 where it changes uh, there so these program changes are fine if you're just going to play things back on the sounds that were intended by the original programmer so if we just have a quick listen uh, we get the idea there um but if you were going to put this onto another synth, let's say for whatever reason you decided to change the sounds, etc., then you'd have to strip out those program changes and finding them can be not not really difficult, but if you've got it on a big uh, file with lots of them in there, it can be a little tedious. So you can actually do it with all of them all at once. So what we're going to do here, I've got everything selected. I'm going to go to the logical editor and we are going to just initialize that there and we are now going to delete all those program changes all in one go so we can just type it's equal to program change and then with the function down at the bottom here we're just going to pick delete and then we click apply and all of the program changes across the whole thing have gone so in fact, if we look at the whole thing here in the list editor, now we can see they're all gone. So those program changes which were in there before. And if I undo the editing we just did uh, and then look at it again, we can see there's all those program changes. So it's stripped all those out regardless of their positions. And again, that is a few clicks, whereas you'd have to do it at least 16 times to get rid of all of them on here, which would be a little bit long-winded. So that's a first thing. It's an extension of selection, etc., but also that you can use the logical editor to delete. Now, second thing is controller data. So previously we had looked at working on notes and with note data the event type is note it has two values it's got value one which is the pitch and value two which is the velocity now with controllers it's a little different now probably 15 maybe 15 20 years ago um everybody was was much i think much more aware of midi information and so on but with the the advent of automation that we've got etc midi data is maybe fallen a bit by the wayside but it still can be really useful and you can get a lot of mileage out of, of synths etc if you know just a bit more than the average joe about the the technical details of what's happening uh in the background so 
this is a bit of that. So this is controller data. Now controller, probably the one you most commonly come across is the modulation wheel on a keyboard. So this has been used generally to give vibrato. So we will just see, for instance, on this nylon guitar track here. So when I turn the modulation wheel up, we can hear that pitch. So we go from a fixed pitch to some vibrato when I put the wheel up. So you've all uh, probably heard that kind of thing. But there is much more to be to be had. There's loads of synths which can be controlled by different uh, MIDI messages and using MIDI Learn, etc. So you can do uh, lots of interesting things with it. But mapping those can be a little bit long-winded. But we're just going to look at how you can manipulate them using the logical editor. So with the soprano sax part here, there is some controller data in here as well. So if we double click that, we're on velocity, and when we click the selection here, we can see all of the things which are present in the part because they have a star next to them. So we can see there is actually some pitch bend in here, but importantly as well, there's some modulation. And we can see those ramps of modulation which have been uh, put in, which add in some vibrato to those notes etc. Now let's say we want to do something with that. Let's say we want to change that to a different controller. We can do that or we can start playing around with it, scaling it and deleting it etc. But deleting is going to be fairly easy. So let's say we want to change that from controller 1 to another synth which uses controller 6. Now this is quite common because quite often synths use controller 6 because it's a, a general data entry thing and often it can be used for things such as filter control depending on what you've got it mapped to. So let's just look at an example of changing this from CC1 to CC6. Now yes you could copy and paste etc but I've always found dealing with controllers, uh, copy and paste, etc. It can be phenomenally miserable in Cubase. So instead of doing that, copying it and then trying to paste it in this, that and the other, uh, what we're going to do is do that in the logical editor. So as ever, we'll open up the logical editor and then we are going to change the filter here to have two lines in it. So the first thing is type is equal. It's not going to be program change like the last one. It's going to be controller. OK, but we don't want it to select just any controller. OK, so controller datas are different to uh, notes. So with controller, value one is the controller number, which in this case is CC1. You can see down here. Um, and then value two is the actual value of that controller. So we want to select by value one as well. So we're going to add another line. And they're going to pick value one. And you see, because it knows we're talking about controllers, it changes that to MIDI controller number. If this was type is equal to note, then that would say pitch, but it knows that value one is MIDI controller number, which helps you. And then we're going to change that to equal one. Okay. And just to check, we're going to put select and I'm going to click apply. And we can see it's selected all that data there. Okay. So that's the first step. Now, if we want to change it to controller six, we just need to fix value one to a new value. So we're going to leave value one there, and then we're going to change that to set to fixed value. We're going to change that to six there. And once we change the function to transform, we're going to click apply and poof, it's disappeared here. But if we pick this, we can see under data entry MSB, it's been changed to that there. Now, depending on the synth you're using, it could know, could use uh, any, almost any controller number, not any one totally, but there, there's a wide range they can use. But as long as you know what the number is, you can change it from one to another, etc. Straightforward. But remember with controllers, number one is the controller number and value two is the actual value of that controller. So when you look at in list editor or whatever, that's what you've got to think about. So it's a little bit different to notes, but other than that, largely the same. And say changing from one type to another is really easy doing this. There's no copy and pasting, so you don't have to worry about losing position or getting in the wrong scale or moving up and down, etc. It's much quicker to do it with this. And obviously, say you can do an entire track or even an entire song at once. So if you knew your entire every synth that you were using needed to use it on a different one. You can just do that in a few clicks.